let us first have a background on the tool we are going to use in this analysis, the game theory. What is a game? A game is any situation in which players make strategic decisions that take into account each other's actions and responses. Examples of games include competing with each other by setting prices. The game in this case is Katrina and Hayden's Village. What is a strategy? A strategy is a rule or plan of action for playing the game. For our price setting firms, a strategy might be, I'll keep my price high as long as my competitors do the same. But once a competitor lowers his price, I'll lower mine even more. Notice that the fundamental difference between cooperative and non-cooperative games lies in the contracting possibilities. In cooperative games, binding contracts are possible. In non-cooperative games, they are not. Whatever the game, however, keep in mind that following key point about strategic decision making. It is essential to understand your opponent's point of view and to deduce his or her likely responses to your actions. Game theory is a theory trying to explain behavior of economic agents involving strategic interaction. It is best to explain by an example. Dominant strategy and Nash equilibrium. It is helpful to compare the concept of Nash equilibrium with that of an equilibrium in dominant strategies. In dominant strategy, you may say, I'm doing the best I can no matter what you do, and you're doing the best you can no matter what I do. In the Nash equilibrium, you may say, I'm doing the best I can given what you are doing, and you're doing the best you can given what I am doing. And now you have learned the basics of game theory, let us proceed to the analysis of Katrina and Hayden scandals. If both of them would confess, the general public would think that they are guilty of the act and they are both responsible on the video. This implies that confessing would ruin the reputation of both of them in a way that they cannot hold back. People would think that it's the fault of them both. If Katrina confesses and Hayden remains silent, Katrina would have the opportunity to blame Hayden and claim for her innocence. This is for the reason that the one who confessed can blame the other. For example, saying that she was drugged by him. On the other hand, if Hayden confesses and Katrina remains silent, he would be the one to have the opportunity to blame the other. Notice that it is possible that both of them would think that confessing would be good, provided that the other remains silent, even if this move is too risky. And finally, if both of them remain silent and would let the issue die by not making any comments about it, they can both claim innocence. For example is the issue with Marikar and Hayden. Since Marikar did not make a big deal about it and shut herself up 
after very few conversations, Hayden doing the same, Marikar continued on her career and the only issue was with Katrina and Hayden. The Nash equilibrium is if they both remain silent because they could both claim to be innocent and people not knowing the truth. Then, they are both better off. By thinking that confessing could make one blame the other, both Katrina and Hayden wrote the issue and made claims that the other person is the one responsible. The dominant strategy there is that they would both confess. Hayden's side blamed Katrina for giving him drugs, while Katrina said that Hayden is a maniac that uses girls and records their acts on the videos. The result of this action is that both of them were guilty. The public thought that they had really done the act without even making sure that they were really the ones in the video. This completely blocked their escape and all they could do now is blame each other and prove who is more responsible. This is a very bad payoff resulting from a very risky strategy.